Hello everyone, this is John O'Bacon. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all safe and sound. Thank you for joining me for one of my YouTube videos. I hope you find it useful because today I'm going to talk about how to make content perform better. Now, many of you out there will have blogs and you'll create articles and content. You'll create videos and podcasts and webinars and social media and maybe small performance art dances in your local town, whatever it might be. Uh, you'll put a lot of work into your content and it can be really demoralizing when you put that content out there and no one really cares, okay? So today I wanna walk through some some really practical recommendations about how you can make your content perform better, okay? I'm gonna go through eight very practical tips that you can touch on right now. Okay, so let's get right into it. Now, the first question is, what is content creation, okay? <laughs> what is the purpose of this? Well, I quite like HubSpot's definition, which is basically content is is the generation of topic ideas that you put out there to serve a particular kind of persona and then you usually deliver it via written or visual content, okay? Um, and content's really important. It's an important way to build relationships with people, to build growth, and to continue to build engagement with customers or community members or whoever else. Now, why is it important and why is it valuable? Well, it doesn't just provide content, uh, you know, useful information to your to your audience, but it also builds this real sense of trust, okay? Your audience is going to consciously and subconsciously form opinions on you, your business, your community um, as they consume this content. If I keep out putting great content out there, then I assume people are going to think, well, Jono knows what he's talking about. I should probably listen to him. Might be useful to continue to watch more of his stuff, okay? So, if they find really engaging, educational, and valuable material, by definition, it's going to improve not just their perception of, of, of you and your organization, but they're going to get real value out of it directly as well. But this all begs a question, like, what's the problem with this? Well, fundamentally, a lot of content out there is, frankly, not particularly useful, and it's really boring, okay? And no one wants to sit there and read and, you know, read uninteresting, boring material or sit through some guy droning on through a boring presentation. Just not very particularly useful. So... The other challenge here is that a lot of this content doesn't get read or it doesn't get shared or it doesn't get liked. So you put a ton of work into generating this material and then it doesn't really get kind of the value that you were hoping for um, um, when you when you were invested in creating that content, okay? So the only way in which we can really kind of move the needle on this is if we can measure the efficacy of our existing material and our future material. And for that reason, data is absolutely everything, okay? If you're not measuring it, then you're not able to optimize it. So one thing I'd like to strongly recommend you do is to go and install Google Analytics. Now, Google Analytics is a free tool. You take a little bit of code that they generate and pop it into your, into your website, and it gives you all kinds of insights into how your website and your content is performing, okay? Now, if you're new to Google Analytics, it can feel a little bit like staring into an airplane cockpit. It's incredibly complicated in how it's set up. You know, kudos to the poor people at Google. They've done their best to make it easy to use, but it it's an analytics tool, okay? It's always going to be difficult. But if you go and watch a couple of YouTube videos about how to get started with Google Analytics, you're going to basically pick up the basics, and you're going to get a good sense of how it works, okay? So don't let the, the interface put you off. Um, you're going to get a lot of value out of using it, and it's going to be worthwhile uh, it's going to be worth your time investing in in understanding how it operates. So go and do a quick search for some beginner's guides and you'll get started. I might put some together myself. Now, the other thing you should know about are what's called UTM codes. So when you put a link out there into the world, right, Google Analytics can tell you a little bit about where people are coming from, but UTM codes allow you to add an extra level of information, right? So for example, imagine you are going to coordinate a webinar, right? And you're going to do a bunch of promotion about the webinar. Right. So imagine, for example, you put a blog post out there about the webinar and what's going to be in it. Now, you probably want to get a sense of where people are coming from who read that blog post. OK, so, you know, they may be coming from social media. They may be coming from specific paid advertising. They may be coming from another blog post. They may be coming from a link that you put at the bottom of your website under, underneath other material. So what you can do with UTM codes is you can essentially go and add information that sits at the end of that link that will tell Google Analytics more about where they came from. Now, if you look at a URL that's got these UTM codes on it, it can look a little bit complicated. And I can imagine you thinking, how the hell do I set those up? Well, the good news is if you go and do a search for UTM Builder on Google, it'll take you to a website where, that Google runs where you can basically add the link that you want to share, and then you can fill in the UTM code details, and it'll generate the link for you, okay? 
So when you put that link out there, let's say for the sake of argument, you want to track how many people are clicking, on, going to your blog post where you linked it from the bottom of your website, then you could say, you know, th this UTM information has got uh, information about that these people came from your website, the position of the link, maybe it's at the bottom of a blog post, um, that will give you amazing insight and giving you a sense of where your traffic's coming from, okay? Again, there's loads of tutorials and guides out there about how to use UTM codes, but definitely look into that. It's dead simple once you get the hang of it. Now, the other thing you need to care about here is don't just focus on overall traffic, but also focus on, on bounce rate, popular content, devices, and locations. So the overall traffic will give you a sense in Google Analytics of whether people are actually showing up. Um, and how many unique users you've got. But Google Anal Analytics can tell you which of the material on your website is most popular, that gets the most views. It can tell you what people are connecting on. Are they using desktops or, or, de or mobile devices or tablets or something along those lines? It can tell you where in the world they're coming from. And bounce rate is, do they just read that one piece and then leave? Or do they kind of bounce around and check out other content on the site as well? And you want to consistently improve the bounce rate and, and encourage retention on your website. So Google Analytics helps with that. And then the final thing is you can create something called goals in Google, Google Analytics where you can say, for example, okay, when someone comes and, and, and looks at one of my blog posts, I want them to sign up for my email list, right? So to do that, you'd want to track whether they actually get, went and signed up after reading a post, and that's called a goal. So what you can do in Google Analytics is you can create those goals. They're relatively straightforward to set up, and then you can see how many goals you're accomplishing throughout that time. A lot of people use this, for example, for e-commerce to set, determine whether they were selling training courses or products or services and things like that. So it's a bit of work. It's a bit confusing at first, but I promise you investing your time in understanding Google Analytics is critical to make all of the rest of this really work, okay? Now, tip number one, your headline really matters. 80% of people out there will read the headlines, but they're probably not going to read the rest of the content. About 20% of people tend to read the rest of the content. So you want to make sure that your headline grabs people. Now, there are these awful marketing people out there who focus on clickbait, you know, make $10,000 in the next two minutes, all that kind of crap. And it's just, it's shit, okay? Don't, don't descend down the clickbait route. It, while it might work, and it's proven to work in many cases, it, it destroys a lot of the trust that your audience is going to have in you. You want them, you know, to have this good, this, this view of you as being a good, decent, reasonable human being. A lot of clickbait stuff kind of shatters <laughs> elements of that, okay? What you want to do is you want to focus on what is the pain that your audience are experiencing. So imagine using webinars as an example again. Imagine your audience is people who run webinars. Well, probably what they're worried about is um, that on the day, that all of the AV stuff screws up. So you could have a piece of content, which is how to guarantee that your, your webinar broadcast is going to go AV problem free, for example. Uh, another piece of pain they may have is that they're worried that no one's going to sign up. So another uh, headline could be something along the lines of um, seven ways to increase uh, signups for your webinar, something along those lines. Keep it really short, keep it focused, keep it pragmatic, but keep it on what is the thing that they that's on the top of their minds right now? What do they care most about when it comes to doing whatever they're focused on, okay? And have it reflect your personal style. Again, if you're not a jargony, you know, marketing-y type of person, then don't talk like that. You know, when I've done a lot of uh, research into how people, for example, write sales letters or people create marketing content, a lot of it seems so cliched and so kind of desperate that's not my style so I don't try to put any of that in my writing and I'd encourage you to don't you don't do the same thing in yours just have a very personal style that reflects you and your organization okay so here's a couple of examples of some uh, headlines that I've done you know it ain't all about sign up strangers are people too this was one that was designed more for community professionals um, you know making it very clear that you know, people who don't sign up for your service is something that we should care about, and that can provide some insight into that. 10 tips for rocking your Zoom calls. Right now, as I record this, Zoom is a big deal because of the coronavirus. Um, so people care about 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 how they can optimize Zoom um, and how they use it, particularly people who are new to it. Um, and again, the 10 tips or 8 tips or 7 recommendations. While at first I didn't like this style because it felt very BuzzFeedy, it does work. And I think so long as you provide really actually practically useful stuff, it's a good way of basically making people know that here are a number of things, elements of value that they can get out of it. So I think it's actually a good technique to use. Just make sure you actually deliver good tips. Um, and then the final example here is open source won't save a subpar product. This was designed for an open source audience where a lot of people um, out there think that if you just open source something, then ah, all of our problems will be solved. Eh, 
no chance. Um, <laughs> so let's get on to tip number two. All right. So mind your formatting and your length. People are scanners. When they have a piece of content, let's say a blog post that opens up in front of them, the first thing they do is they scan to the bottom of the blog post. They see how much work is involved and then they will um, determine whether this is worth the investment. I bet you anything, when you opened up this YouTube video, you took a look at it and you looked at how long it was and you're like, all right, well, this seems to be less than, you know, 35 minutes, then that seems pretty decent. Therefore, I'll probably give it a go. You saw that there's a number of tips. Therefore, it's probably going to be worth your time. Okay. You can get through it quickly and easily. So people do the same thing. So you want to make sure that you, A, don't have too much content. You don't want too little content either, but B, that you format in a way that makes it simple for people to be able to go and look at it and see what they can accomplish. Okay. So with blog posts, make them less than 700 words. With videos, generally less than four minutes. Presentations, less than 40 minutes. Webinars, less than an hour. Web copy, less than 500 words. The reason why I say the blog post piece is because just people don't want to read more than 700, 750 words. They want to get through it quickly and easily. Short videos tend to perform well. Um, if, if you want to capture someone, especially someone who's cold in your audience who doesn't really know you. So less than four minutes is good. But you know, I think this is example. This video is a good example of this. I'm packing a ton of content into a relatively short period of time. So, so long as it's content rich, it's okay for them to be a bit longer. But generally, try to avoid like hour, two hour, three hour long videos. People are not going to watch them. Presentations. People don't want to listen to people waffling on for longer than 35 or 40 minutes. So try to keep them relatively short. Webinars. Some people sell stuff and it lasts more than an hour. And usually on kind of they're, they're presenting workshops with a big ticket item at the end. I generally avoid anything over an hour. People just, they don't want to block off that much time in their, in their schedule to join a webinar. I think 30 minute webinars are awesome as well. And then web copy, things that you write on a website, such as, you know, about your product, your service, your community. I think less than 500 words is generally good. People want to get to the meat of what you're, you're, what you're offering, okay? And then when I say formatting to your advantage, what I mean by this is, let's say you've got a blog post. Don't have a wall of text. Break it up with headings and format it and include images and embedded videos and things like that. When you create your videos, create visual content, like you're looking right now at, at, at a set of slides that visualizes the content, okay? So make it, you know, make it easy for people to be able to consume the content. They don't just listen. They don't just read, but they, they, they look at the breakdown of the material as well, okay? Now, tip number three, keywords are really, really important, okay? Um, the way search engine optimization often works is that it's, it tends to be anchored to keywords. So if you, if for example, you're interested in Zoom, then you'll type in Zoom and it will come up with articles and content that relates to that. So you wanna choose your keywords based upon what people are likely to be searching for. So for example, if I'm gonna focus on an article with Zoom and my article previously that I mentioned is a good example of this, I'll include the word Zoom in the, in the headline. I'll include it in the opening paragraph and I'll probably sprinkle it throughout the article a few different times because that's going to optimize the post for search engine optimization. Now, if you pack it in too many times, if I zoom, 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 that's called keyword stuffing and that has the opposite effect. But if you don't mention it at all, people aren't going to be able to find it, okay? Now, you can use tools like Google's Keyword Planner, which is a kind of a neat little tool that you can use to determine which keywords tend to perform better than others. Um, but make sure that you think about which keywords you want to target first before you put it into the article, okay, or before you create the content. It's really important to do that. All right, tip number four, be more visual. It's amazing how many people will just put out like a, a blog post or a, an article and it's just text. They maybe don't even format it. It's just paragraphs. Who wants to read that? I don't, okay? I don't need to be visually excited all of the time, but I do want a little bit of sugar poured on it, <laughs> okay? Now, 37% of, of marketers have said that visual marketing was one of the most important forms of content for their businesses. And I believe that data, okay? So you really want to focus on what professional marketers know, and that is that visual content makes the difference. So make sure you include imagery and content and, and, and bring it to life. You know, the slides, for example, that you're seeing right now, I created it using a tool called Canva, which makes visual presentations very easy to put together. Um, you can also take existing material and repurse it into infographics and visual charts and visual videos and things like that. People really do, you know, they eat with their eyes, okay? So be more visual. It's definitely going to make your, your, your content come to life. And it's easier than ever before to do this because there's all kinds of stock imagery out there and tools like Canva to make generating visual content really simple, okay? You don't necessarily need to go and hire a graphic designer to do that. All right, tip number five. Focus on your audience. Your audience 
love to hear about themselves, okay? Now, 71% of brands out there include case studies and customer stories in their content, okay? And you often see this on websites with te testimonials and case studies and these kinds of different bits and pieces, but only about 3% really delve deeper into those stories and make them relatable to their readers, okay? Now, sure, if I'm writing about Let's say I'm, I'm creating a piece of content on a software product. Sure, I can do case studies of these businesses who have used it, but what do my audience really care about? They care about solving problems with it and maximizing the value of how they use it, meeting other people who use it. They care about those kinds of things too, okay? So create your content and, and use examples of how your audience have had certain challenges and problems and how they've been solved. You use real examples. This is where communities can be so powerful because you can point to discussions on community forums and channels and other things as examples of real questions that people have and how that was and and how that was dealt with. Okay, so absolutely incorporate your audience as much as possible into your content. It also means that when they read it, when they watch it, when they listen to it, they know that you're watching and that you're listening to what they care about. Okay, it builds a more relatable relationship that they have with you as well. Now, tip number six, actionable content wins, okay? People aren't gonna um, just read a chunk of content and then be able to figure out what's next themselves. You need to give them very clear steps on what they should be doing, okay? So tell your audience the benefits of your content first up front. Say, in this piece, you're gonna get this level of value out of it. So at the beginning of this video, for example, I walk through, you're gonna be, I'm gonna be going through eight very practical recommendations on, on how to make your content more efficient. I outlined the problem at the beginning that a lot of our content doesn't perform particularly well. It doesn't get shared, it doesn't get liked, it doesn't, doesn't get kind of the impact that you want. So be very upfront with what they're gonna get out of it before they have the investment of, 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 of reading and consuming or watching your content, okay? But then you should be very specific about what people should do at every step, okay? So for example, in this video, I'm walking through a series of very practical tips. You should do exactly the same thing. Go through a series of very practical recommendations. You know, for example, when I talked about Google Analytics, I said, you know, set up analytics. Go and look at UTM codes. Make sure that you don't just uh, don't just look at the 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 um, the amount of traffic you're getting. Look at the bounce rate. Look at the locations. Look at the devices. Give them very specific things to do. The other thing that you should think about is breaking more complex concepts down into bite-sized, easy steps. Okay. So, for example. Uh, let's say you're going to do a tutorial or a, or a guide on how to do something. Well, get people towards an outcome, such as building a specific thing, such as, using my example earlier on, how to set up and run a webinar, okay? Now break it down into, okay, step one, we're going to go through these pieces. Step two, we're going to go through these pieces. Step three, we're going to go through these pieces. So with the webinar example, it could be, first of all, we're going to think about the topic and the speakers and the content, right? Step two is we're going to set up the webinar and configure it. Uh, configure questions such as, you know, do we enable, do we allow questions? Um, what do we want to ask people when they register? How is that registration handled? Step three could be, um, how do you prepare for the webinar? Speaker training, getting your slides ready. Step four could be executing and delivering the webinar as an example, right? Break it down into those, those steps. It makes it much easier for your audience to be able to consume the content. You want to take all of the thinking out of it for them. You want to make it dead simple for them to get value out of it, okay? And then the other thing is right at the end of your content, always have a call to action, but it should be a single call to action. It can't be more than one. So a lot of videos, for example, on YouTube, they'll say, okay, subscribe to my video, click on the bell to get notified of new videos. Um, you know, click on this other video to go and watch that one. Go to my website, follow me on social media. It's too much. People can't remember all that stuff. So just ask them to do one thing. And you'll notice at the end of this video, there's gonna be one call to action. I'm gonna encourage you to go and sign up on my website where I will share more content with you. Now, if you're gonna do, you can do that and I'd love you to do that, but you might not do it, but at least you'll know what the single call to action is gonna be, okay? Um, now, tip seven is use quotes and insights from experts. So you know a ton about your subject and about what you're focused on, uh, but you can't possibly be an expert in everything and your audience is gonna know that, okay? So use testimonials and quotes from people, but also sh you know incorporate content into that. So to give you an example, this right here is my new book, People Powered. And, I, you know, I wrote this, um, and it took a long time to write it, but I included a whole bunch of content from other people in it. So, for example, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, the Emmy Award-winning actor, got some material from him about his website, uh, his community, Hit Record. 
Uh, Jim Zemlin, the executive director at the Linux Foundation, got some content content from him about open source. Mike uh, Shinoda, the co-creator of Linkin Park, some content with him about how they've built the Linkin Park community. You know, uh, Ali Velshi, who is an anchor at MSNBC, got some content from him about um, his views on the role of communities within politics. So, you know, tap into the insight of other people. It's going to strengthen your product. It's going to strengthen your content, highlight statistics and other material that really brings it to life. So it's not just you and your soapbox. You're really sharing an interesting set of reflected opinions on, on the topic that you're discussing. Okay. Um, and then finally, tip number eight, link to related and recommended content. Now, one of the things I mentioned earlier on was when you look at Google Analyt Analytics, you want to encourage the amount of time that people stay on your website. And this is called bounce rate. Now, a lot of people will go to your website or your content and they'll or they'll come to YouTube or wherever else and they'll consume a single piece of content, right? So they'll they'll read your one article or your one blog post or they'll watch your one YouTube video or whatever it might be. Um, and then they'll leave. And ideally what you want them to do is to kind of binge your material. You want them to go and read other content or watch other videos, okay? So always try to include related posts on your blog, for example, or you might want to point to other videos that people should go and watch that might be related to the, the content that you shared. It will increase the quality of that bounce rate. It's going to increase how much time people spend looking at your material. And that's more time than understanding you and your perspectives and the value that you bring. Um, and what you also want to consider doing, especially within written content, is one of the great benefits of the web, uh, and this goes back to the old days of when hypertext became a thing, is that you can link to other articles on the web from within your content. So, you know, you can have a sentence and then you can provide a link in that sentence that goes somewhere else. So link to other things that you've written, other content that you've produced where people can go and find out more as well, okay? So anyway, that's it. I wanted to keep this relatively short and sweet. Those are eight recommendations. Um, I tend to put out a bunch of content. Um, you know, this is the call to action, by the way. Check it out. So, um, you know, I, I write a lot of content. I do videos. Oh, that's my computer making a beeping sound. I've got a meeting in 10 minutes. Uh, you can stay up to date. If you go to johnobacon.com forward slash join, um, you can join as a member. It's completely free, but I will send you loads of content about building great communities, about engaging with people, about building collaboration. Um, I don't spam you. I will never sell your information to anybody else. You can unsubscribe whenever you want. Uh, but I think it might be useful for you. You'll be able to get some really cool stuff sent into your inbox. I also regularly have competitions and prizes and run webinars and all kinds of good stuff. So uh, anyway, I hope that was useful. Thank you for joining me and have a great week.